Canto 5 The Yoga of the King The Yoga of the Spirit's Freedom and Greatness Section 18 This knowledge first he had of time-born men, admitted through a curtain of bright mind that hangs between our thought and absolute sight. He found the occult cave, the mystic door, near to the well of vision in the soul, and entered where the wings of glory brood, in the sunlit space where all is forever known. Indifferent to doubt and to belief, avid of the naked real single shock, he shore the cord of mind that ties the earth heart, and cast away the yoke of matter's law. The body's rules bound not the spirit's powers. When life had stopped his beats, death broke not in. He dared to live when breath and thought were still. Thus could he step into that magic place, where few can even glimpse with hurried glance, lifted for a moment from mind's labored works and the poverty of nature's earthly sight. All that the gods have learned is their self-known. There in a hidden chamber, closed and mute, are kept the record graphs of the cosmic scribe, and there the tables of the sacred law. There is the book of beings index page, the text and glossary of the Vedic truth. Are there the rhythms and meters of the stars, significant of the movements of our fate, the symbol powers of number and of form, and the secret code of the history of the world, and nature's correspondence with the soul are written in the mystic heart of life. In the glow of the spirit's room of memories, he could recover the luminous marginal notes, dotting with light the crabbed ambiguous scroll, rescue the preamble and the saving clause of the dark agreement by which all is ruled, that rises from material nature's sleep to clothe the everlasting in new shapes. He could reread now and interpret new its strange symbol letters, scattered abstruse signs, resolve its oracle and its paradox, its riddling phrases and its blindfold terms, the deep oxymoron of its truth's repliques, and recognize as a just necessity its hard conditions for the mighty work. Nature's impossible Herculean toil, only her warlock wisecraft could enforce its law of opposition of the gods, its list of inseparable contraries. The dumb great mother in her cosmic trance, exploiting for creation's joy and pain, infinity's sanction to the birth of form, accepts indomitably to execute the will to know in an inconscient world, the will to live under a reign of death, the thirst for rapture in a heart of flesh, and works out through the appearance of a soul, by a miraculous birth in plasm and gas, the mystery of God's covenant with the night. Once more was heard in the still cosmic mind, the Eternal's promise to his laboring force, inducing the world passion to begin, the cry of birth into mortality, and the opening verse of the tragedy of time. Out of the depths the world's buried secret rose. He read the original Yukazi kept back, in the locked archives of the spirit's crypt, and saw the signature and fiery seal of wisdom on the dim power's hooded work, who builds in ignorance the steps of light. A sleeping deity opened deathless eyes. He saw the unshaped thought in soulless forms, new matter pregnant with spiritual sense. Mind dare the study of the unknowable, life its gestation of the golden child. In the light flooding thought's blank vacancy, interpreting the universe by soul signs, he read from within the text of the without. The riddle grew plain and lost its catch obscure. A larger luster lit the mighty page, a purpose mingled with the whims of time, a meaning met the stumbling pace of chance, and fate revealed a chain of seeing will. A conscious wideness filled the old dumb space. In the void he saw throned the omniscient supreme.